We always wonder how birds can fly in many different ways. This is because of their flight feathers. We want to learn how flight feathers are made so we can understand the nature better and learn bioarchitecture principles. Therefore, we organize a multidisciplinary team to study. The flight feather is made of two modules, the central shaft and the peripheral band. Both are produced by stem cells in the follicle under the skin. Here we will show the biophysical study of the rockies, molecular study of the valve, and the amber fossils that record the evolution of feather band. When birds fly, the strong but light central shaft of a feather, the rachis, supports the feather to work against the mechanical loads from air. The rachis is composed of the outer rigid cortex and the inner porous medulla. Resolving the detailed integration of these two components revealed the architectural principle of the diverse feather shaft in nature. We developed a novel analysis, Q-morph, to resolve the cellular organization in the medulla. After coarse-grained measurement of the cellular size, orientation, and elongation over the entire rachis coaccession, the spatial distribution of the cellular morphology in medulla is quantitatively revealed. We discovered that the rachis is integrated quite differently in nature. Combining the Q-morph analysis of medulla with the geometrical and material characterizations of cortex, we found that the rachis composite is integrated ingeniously with a simple and light medulla core with a polarized cortex reinforcement in a feather of good flyers. The water diving penguin even shows the extreme reinforcement of rachis, the cortex-only configuration. While the deformable modulary cells are the traces of the complex rachis development, the variation of Q-morph patterns suggests an evolution of the keratin allocation strategy in the feather rachis to overcome the ecological challenges. We further studied the molecular control of cortex and medulla formation in the feather rachis and found BMP signaling can control the cortex thickness while TGF beta signaling enhances medulla formation. Here is the cartoon feather shows two types of vein. Vein is composed of bulbs. Each bulb branch into bubulus. In one proximal pronaceous feather, bubula has not structure. In distal pronaceous feather, specialized ectodermal structure called hooklet is formed at the end of the bubulus. Hooklets hold bulbs tightly together, providing the integrated structure of the feather vein for flying. But how do hooklets form? Dr. Wei Lin Zhang decided to take a look at how hooklets form at the cellular and the molecular level. In one cartoon failure, vein formed from distal penetrates to proximal pulmonary failure. All this process is happening in the same dermal papilla in the bottom of the follicle. Our laboratory studies show that dermal papilla contains spatial information controlling penetrates versus pulmonary branching patterning. To investigate the cellular and the molecular mechanism, we collect follicle at appropriate time as they form. First, we dissect the dermal papilla for transcriptome analysis to find out differently expressed genes. Further confirmation is go through biological studies and the functional assay in chicken. On the other part, we examine the bulb ridge to understand the cellular morphology and the molecular expression under microscopy. Our result shows that asymmetric wind signaling within the dermal papilla affects the molecular expression and the control papillary cell phase for branching formation. Functional studies doing in the chicken shows that wind signaling modulate feather branch type formation. Increased wind signaling in the anterior of the dermal papilla, a penetrous specific hook leg like structure formed in the growth in pulmonary feather follicle. Then, how is the feather in dinosaur? So Cretaceous feather embedded in vermis ember have no barbule cell shapes with no shape difference between proximal and distal barbules, and there is no sign of hooklet. This indicates early feather wings formed through the overlap of proximal and distal barbules, and a modern feather wings configuration formed by hooklet, which may have developed later. Thus, we learn how simple epidermis is transformed into flight feather. Rockies become complex in feather dinosaur. 
but become simplified in different ways in current births. Maps changed from radial to bilateral symmetry to bilateral asymmetry at the ramus and the barbule level, creating many functional forms. Together, they power birth into diverse ecological space. At the application level, our multidisciplinary approach is capable of resolving various details of cellular compositions in tissues. The cortex medulla composition with different organizations of cellular origami makes the racket a shaft with tunable material properties. The vein is made of fractalized paper cutting principles with highly effective branch interweave. This modular enhanced the functional flexibility of a fly feather. The architecture principles we have learned from nature in this study may inspire the development of novel composite materials and promote the advance of additive manufacturing technologies.